Welcome guys to representing data in 201. Today we're going to be looking at an introduction to statistics. Most of what we will be concentrating on however is graphical displays. When it comes to statistics pretty much what we have is collection the collection of data. You can do surveys or experiments. The analyzing of data which means looking for patterns or trends and distributing the data or communicating the data, which is what we're looking at today, graphical displays. It is important when we have graphical displays that we all are on the same page. So that's what is important about graphs. Today, specifically, we're looking at a dot plot and a histogram. And a dot plot simply is the collections of dots or X's on a number line to show the frequency of the values in the data. So here's an example. We have 29 students were asked how many TVs they have in their house. The results of the surveys are listed below. And we are to use a dot plot to represent this data. So what we're looking at here is the number of TVs and the number of students. Notice that we have three students. Let me say my pen here, oops. Now we got it, I think. All right, so here we got three students, sorry about that, and one TV. We also have six students with two TVs. 10 students answered the survey saying they have three TVs. Seven students said they had four TVs and three students in my classroom had five TVs. So in order to put all of these together, we're gonna be using a dot plot. Here's an example. Notice we have a number line here. The values one, two, three, four, and five. We have to label our axis so the one, two, three, four, five are the number of TVs. The title here is number of TVs in the house. Since we had three students, we're gonna put three dots under one TV. I mean, sorry, above one TV. So three students answered and said, I have one TV. So when I represent this here, oh, an extra line here, sorry. <laughs> when I represent this, I have one TV and a total of three observations, one for each student. I also had six students answered and say they had two TVs. So notice that I'm gonna put uh, right above two TVs, six dots, one for each student. Why? Because there were six students. One, two, three, four, five, and six that answered saying they had two TVs, which is what this represents. One dot per student. If we were to do that for three TVs, four TVs, and five TVs, filling out the rest of the table, what we have here is, notice again, we have five TVs only for three students, so one, two, three. Seven students said they had four TVs, so right above four we have seven students, and if you count these, they have seven. And then we have 10 students saying they had three TVs, so all of these dots here, right above three TVs, number 10. And that's a dot plot. Now, what about a histogram? Well, a histogram is a special type of bar graph that uses equal width bars to show the number of data items that occur within each interval. So what makes this special? Well, special, first of all, because the, bar are, the bars are all together. There's no space in between them, unlike a bar graph. So when you have a bar graph, you can have them spaced out. Notice also here that we have interval. That means when we have our values on the x-axis or the horizontal axis, they're going to be grouped together. Here's an example. So 0 to 5. My first graph here, my first bar here, represents any observation between 0 and 5. Notice real quick, too, that we have all the bars are together, and they all represent monthly trips to McDonald's. Here down here we have the trips, so that first bar has any value between 0 and 5. 
It could be a zero, a one, two, three, four, or a five. We really have no idea whether it is a one, a two, a three, or a five. That's what makes it special. Bars together and histogram has intervals. Notice we have nine. That's how high this bar goes. That means there are nine students. We get students from the actual axis right here. We have six through 11 trips taken by, if I count up here, that is 11, 12. So we have 12 total students saying they take anywhere between six and 11 trips. The same thing for my next bar, between 12 and 17 trips are taken by a total of, up here we have 29 students. And then we have 20 students and we have three students on this last bar graph. That means, again, we could have three students taking all 24 trips. It could be one takes 24 and two take 25. It could be two of them take 28 and one takes 29. We have no, sorry about that, we have no idea. But if I ask what, how many take 12 or more trips, then what that means is the bars from 12 all the way to 29 added together equal the number of students that take 12 trips or more. Notice that that 12 is very important. I can't just say, hey, how many kids take 13, uh, 13 trips? Well, I have no idea because the, all of them could be 12. All 29 could be 12. So that 12 is very important. The same thing for 29. If I say how many kids take 27 trips, again, I have no idea. There are three kids in that category between 24 and 29, but there's no way of telling exactly which one. So that concludes my histogram and dot plot presentation for 201. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.